Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to attach a rotary tool to my Hypercube 3D printer and cut shapes out of flat acrylic sheets. Well, that's the plan. Let's see if it's possible. I've purchased a cheap rotary tool for this exercise with a flexible shaft adapter. This way we can attach the flex shaft to the X carriage of the 3D printer instead of the rotary tool itself. This should save on weight and vibrations. For the cutting bits, I've purchased a pack of titanium coated 1.5mm end mills with a 1 8 or 3.175mm shank. To attach the flexible shaft to the X carriage, I've designed and printed a mount for it. So this is just printed in PLA plastic for the moment. It requires four by M3 20 millimeter screws and eight M3 hex nuts. You can see four at the base in there and two on either side. The four at the base clamp onto the X carriage itself and the four outer ones clamp the flexible shaft coupler to it. The carbon fibre tubes on the X gantry work great for 3D printing as the 3D printer head never actually touches the part being printed. But as we're going to plunge an end mill into acrylic, we'll probably need stiffer rails than the carbon tubes we have here. So I'm just going to replace them with 10mm steel rods. To replace the rods on the X gantry is quite simple. Just loosen up the screw clamping the top and bottom of the rails into the XY joiners on both sides, that XY joiner and the other end, and they should just slide out. And then slide in the 10 millimeter steel rod through one XY joiner through the X carriage into the other XY joiner and clamp that down. When mounting the flexible shaft to the X gantry, just ensure the keyhole is located at the front as you need access to this location to be able to loosen and tighten the nut underneath the, uh, the flex shaft here. So I'll just slide this into the X carriage. As you can see I have it facing forward and as I spin this you'll see there's that keyhole. Grab my Phillips head screwdriver and tighten that down. With the rotary toolkit you get your key which slots into that hole when you line up that hole to lock the shaft so the nut won't spin. You also get a little spanner and that allows you then to tighten and loosen the nut underneath while the key is inserted. And you can unscrew the nut from underneath. And you also get a brass collet in various sizes. So the bag that, that comes with is you have various sizes of brass collets and also some replacement uh, DC motor bushings. What we want to use is the brass collet for the shank on the drill bits that we're using. The shank on the drill bits is 3.175 millimeters. So here is our end mill. Slides into the end of the collet like that. We'll have just a few millimeters of the shank sticking out the rear. Slide up the end mill to the flex shaft and take the nut. Screw that down to tighten. And as you tighten, the collet will clamp down on the end mill. While that locking key is in there, it's preventing uh, the shaft from spinning. That allows us to tighten the nut like that, remove the key, and it's ready to start milling. 
For our bed platform, you don't just want to lay the acrylic flush on your 3D printed bed because we're going to be drilling through the acrylic and there's a very high chance we'll be hitting the bed. So we want to lay the acrylic on some waste material first. So I've just got some MDF that I've cut off here and I'll be using double sided tape to stick this down onto this aluminium bed. The double sided tape uh, I have, I've just purchased from the local hardware store. Very strong stuff, it sticks down the MDF very well to this aluminium. And that way we can then stick the acrylic sheet to the MDF and you see we have this gap. So now we're going to protect our bed from the drill bit that's going to be plunging into the acrylic. As I said, this double sided tape is quite strong, you don't need very much. I'm just going to cut off uh, a small square of this, say that size, and I'm going to put just one on each side. Lay that flat there. Another one on this side. Lay that flat. Remove the backing on the other side. That one. And that one. And I'm just going to centre mine in the centre of the bed. And push that down. Ready to go. Same with the acrylic sheet. I've just stuck on two squares of the double sided tape uh, underneath it. So I'll peel off the backing on both of them. And I want to line that up that adhesive with the MDF we've just stuck down. And we're almost ready to start cutting this acrylic. Just need to create our G-code file now. In Fusion 360, we'll start by making a square on the X and Y plane with dimensions of 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. And we'll give this some height, 3.2 millimeters, as that is the thickness of the acrylic we'll be cutting. Now we can switch over to cam. We'll start with setup. We'll change the stock point to the front left hand side. Moving across to the stock tab, we'll change the stock offset mode to no additional stock and press OK. In the 2D drop down, we'll choose 2D contour. From the tool selection, we need to create our tool. Our tool is our end mill. To do that, we'll create a new tool. Under the cutter tab, the type will be flat end mill. The diameter of our end mill is 1.5 millimeters. The flute length is 8 millimeters. The shaft length is 12 millimeters. And the shaft diameter is 3.175 millimeters. These are the dimensions of the uh, end mill that I'll be using for this exercise. And press OK. And OK. For the coolant, change that to disabled. And for all of the feed rates, we'll change them down to 300 millimeters per minute. That equates to five millimeters per second. Moving across to the geometry tab, we'll select the perimeter of the square. Moving across to the heights tab, the bottom height will be the stock bottom. We'll change the retract height to the stock top and make that 5 millimeters. Moving across to passes, we'll change the sideways compensation to conventional milling. And lastly, moving across to linking, we want to employ a ramp so we don't want the end mill to just plunge into the acrylic, we want it to spiral its way down we want to change the maximum ramp step to half the half of the diameter of the end mill which is 0.75 millimeters 
and we'll change the ramps clearance height to one millimeter and press OK. And now we can see the travel moves that Fusion is going to create to be able to cut this 20 millimeter square. We can simulate this by pressing the simulate button and pressing play, speeding this up and you can see with every rotation the end mill is going to plunge 0.75 millimeters down until it finally completes with a total time of 2 minutes and 7 seconds. Lastly, hit the post process button, choose the Fusion 360 uh, post processor for the hypercube that I've created, links in the description below, and post. In the G code that we've just made from Fusion 360, we do need to enter one command in the G code at the very start, and that is M211 space S0. That's going to tell Marlin to disable the software end stops. Because we're going to go into the negative territory with our Z moves, by default Marlin will not allow this. By turning off the software end stops, Marlin will allow it. So position where we want the start to begin, I guess I'll start somewhere over here. Manually raise the Z bed so the end mill is just making contact with the top of the acrylic. And the most important part of this exercise, wear your safety equipment. I'll be wearing some eye protection and some hearing protection. To begin, turn on the rotary tool and send in the G-code. Okay, that cut finished in just under two minutes. Let's dig out our part. And there it is, our 20 millimeter square. Let me vacuum this up. And here is our first cut using the Hypercube and a rotary drill attached to the X-carriage. Let's peel off the protective sticker on the acrylic to expose the surface there. Seems like a nice straight cut so far. I'll remove the other side. Give you a good look of that. So it looks dimensionally accurate. The actual cut is a little bit rough, but it's actually pretty good. The number of flutes on that end mill were quite high, and I was expecting a rough finish. It's not as nice as the laser cut finish, of course, but the laser almost wasn't able to cut the orange. And yet here we are, in less than two minutes, successfully able to cut 3mm orange acrylic. For something a little more challenging for our milling operation, we're going to cut this mini quadcopter frame again. This is the exact same design that I laser cut in the previous video. This time we're going to use our 1.5 millimeter end mill to cut this design.
The cut has finally finished. This took 36 minutes to complete, which is uh, about 10 minutes less than using the laser to go through the black acrylic. But boy, what a mess. I'm not looking forward to cleaning up the room. Vacuuming just around the hypercubes is easy enough, but these acrylic filings, they scattered everywhere. The moment of truth, was it worth the noise and the cleaning to cut this part for 36 minutes? Oh, good start. Okay, let me vacuum all this first and we'll have a look at this a bit closer. Okay, let's take a closer look at this mini quad frame. At first glance, everything looks perfect. All the detail in the honeycomb shape in the center of the, of the design has all been cut out. And the part is actually intact, it hasn't cracked anywhere. So let's take off the protective stickers on the top of the mini quad frame. Here we go. It's coming off very easily. Take the other side off. It's just always getting the first bit to come away. There it is. This is the transparent grey, I think, acrylic that I had. So wasn't able to obviously laser cut this colour because the, the visible laser just goes straight through this material. But wow, that is impressive. I'm surprised actually because you see the, the honeycomb shape in the centre of this design Obviously the very corners of these hexagons cannot be perfectly sharp because we're using a 1.5 millimeter diameter uh, cutting blade. So they're going to be routed somewhat because of that. But like these circles on the end and of course the, the external part of this frame, perfect. And just for comparison, I have the laser cut uh, black acrylic piece here. This one here took almost 10 minutes longer than this one. And if you remember, I wasn't able to remove some of the detail. So some of these uh, internal parts didn't cut all the way through. And of course, while I was trying to, to clean out some of the components which didn't uh, break off by themselves, accidentally snapped uh, one of the arms on this particular uh, mini quad frame. But what a difference. So just based on this example, I'd say milling acrylic, especially with these intricate shapes, is definitely possible. With our 3D printers. About halfway through cutting this piece, I did notice that signature acrylic smell started to appear. So I did open a window in this room that I'm in just to clear out any acrylic smell. It was nowhere near as potent or concentrated as using the laser, of course, but I guess with the friction created from the end mill rubbing against the side of the acrylic did start to let some of that, you know, that toxic fume that you know we shouldn't be breathing out. So just be mindful if you're going to be printing these long prints, do so in a well ventilated area. Having a look at the end mill after that 36 minute acrylic cut, still looks brand new. The titanium coating doesn't look like it's come away. Still feels sharp. I guess it's ready to go for the next cut. 
and you can see the imprint on the MDF that I had stuck the acrylic to from the design much better to cut through that MDF than my aluminium heat bed that double sided tape is very strong there we go, one side There it is. Okay, now to remove this MDF. <sighs> Got it. Well, there you have it. My first documented milling or cutting operation with a drill attached to my Hypercube 3D printer. And the results, hopefully you agree, at least for an initial test, is a pass. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below your comments on what else I should be doing or what you would like to see or if you've had any other success with your 3D printer and converting it to a, 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 a light, light duty CNC machine. And also a special thanks to everyone on Patreon. It's your support that allows me to, you know, pick up all these items and keep me motivated to do stuff like this.